Adam Jones again. Nice to see you. We're uh, sitting here with Robert Schwab, uh, creator of Shadow of the Demon Lord. Uh, Robert, could you tell us a little bit more about this game? Sure. It is a horror fantasy or dark fantasy role-playing game uh, set for designed specifically for casual players who want a, a role-playing experience without having to work too hard for it. Uh, it uses a D20 and it uses a D6, uh, but it's not based on any other existing game systems. It does draw from lore, from real-world lore, and also gaming lore and that kind of stuff. Uh, these, the game's main shtick is that there's this horrific monster called the Demon Lord that lives in the gaps between universes. And he periodically breaks through into another world, like the Door Song, and devours the planet. And so that's what he's doing. And he's really hungry, and he's found the game, this world, and so his minions are starting to leak through the cracks of reality and overrun things. And so the world is kind of in its final moments, and the player characters are in battle survivors trying to, trying to either escape, stop the demon lord from breaking through, or, or just live it up, live it up while they have their last few moments. So it's a, it is a, it is a dark fantasy game, but. Uh, it is, it is pretty much all of my nightmares writ large. Now, everybody loves a uh, dark, gritty thing. So I, I'm just curious, most of my players are always cut-ups. Is there room for humor in this world at all? Totally. There's, there's room for gallows humor, uh, there, and the game actually supports a lot of that. There's a, it's kind of fun when your character goes crazy and you have to play that character out or have all of a sudden your character does something you didn't expect because you saw something so monstrously horrific. So. I encourage people to in this game to to break the tension with with humor because it's just good for you. It's a good pressure release. Now we had heard that insanity is a mechanic of this game. Could you tell me a little more about how that plays out? Sure. So uh, the game uses a uh, you have a fixed you have to start off with zero insanity. As you accumulate insanity, you every time you gain one or more points of insanity, you become frightened and frightened imposes some drawbacks on you for as long as you remain frightened. Uh, you can shut off Frightened by making a, a, a roll, of a, a willpower roll, so you kind of overcome your fear. Uh, as the game evolves, or as, as you gain insanity, you can also, once you gain it, you don't get rid of it, unless you use magic, or you spend points of insanity to get certain behavioral role-playing traits. So, for example, you might spend one point of insanity to gain a facial tick, or you might spend two points of insanity to have, I have a drinking problem. Or I might spend four points of insanity and I have horrific nightmares, or I like to claw myself, or I have to put me in a straitjacket when I sleep. And so, that's, and so you have these interesting role-playing cues that come out of your experiences with the author. Obviously, you don't want to just throw all sorts of horrific monsters at your PCs or the game goes very quickly. But it is interesting to have those moments when you do face something scary, to know that your character is going to be up against this. I have this stain now on my psyche, and I have to figure out a way to offload it. And how do I want to do that and still be able to play the character on the way? That sounds like it has some fantastic roleplay potential. I have another question. You, uh, you have an incredibly long list of roleplaying experience and uh, creating these things. I'm just worried. When you're working with a team about creating something like Dungeons & Dragons, what's, what's just the worst? Uh, it depends. I mean, the worst. Just uh, the worst. Oh, it's uh, when when whoever's in charge changes their mind about a direction that you've been going for a while, uh, or when you've turned over something and it comes back completely different because somebody decided to make a change to further their own interests or their own underlying objective. That didn't happen. It doesn't happen very often, but those things do happen, and. We're, and that's part of the reason why, you know, as proud as I am of the work I did on D&D 5th Edition, and of course, let me don't, I don't want to link those, that negative thing with D&D at all, because I think D&D is a fantastic game and people are loving it. That game is definitely a game designed by a group of people, and while it, some of it reflects some of my visions about fantasy role-playing, it certainly doesn't reflect all of them, which is what drove me to design Shadow of the Demon Lord, to make it, this is, what, this is the game I want to play. This is the game that I want to run, and this is the game that I think Lots of people want to also play and explore. You talk about uh, playing a game. Tell me, what was the what was the favorite character you ever made? Uh, it's got to be my very first character. His name was Booger, uh, and I was so dismissive of D and D when I started, and I was so unhappy with it. I just was like, this is too much, and I don't really care. I sat down to play Keeping the Borderlands. I had played for not even five minutes, and I crossed his name out and made it Ator after Ator the Fighting Eagle, and I played until he was 39th level. <laughs> 
Also, uh, Robert, one last thing. When can uh, we look forward to playing this game that you're making here? Okay, so the plan is that we're going to do a Kickstarter in the spring. Uh, so we'll have more information about that a little closer. I'm going to be running uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord at Post Apocalypticon in Cleveland, Tennessee. I'm doing another event later on this uh, later on in December. I'll be at MTAC running this game, and if the stars are right and people want to bring me out to London, I'll be at Dragon Mead running this game as well. Uh, as we get closer, more of the game will be available for people to look at, and I'll be building and expanding my playtest groups a little further. Uh, after the Kickstarter closes, provided we fund, we should have the game out with before this time next year. That's the hope. Thank you so much. You're my pleasure. Excellent. Also, uh, curious, what is your favorite cheese? My favorite cheese must be Gouda. I think Gouda, yeah. Good is good cheese. Also, just a comment on favorite color? Black. Oh, understandable, understandable. Robert, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much.